Hey everyone, uh, today we're going to go over uh, the new changes in Home Assistant 0.116 that happened to the front end. Uh, this is the second video in our series of Home Assistant front end tips and tricks, and uh, today we'll be going over the new stuff. Go ahead and get started. Uh, so the biggest change um, we had this release was we are now able to edit an entities card that has any type of special row. So for example, a special row would be a section row, a buttons row, a ass row, any type of row like that, a divider. Um, that is now all editable and it will not throw, you can use the UI to, um, to edit them. You do have to um, use the code editor to add them right now. Um, that'll soon be changing uh, within you know one of the next releases, but you are able to edit them. So for example, on my screen right now, you can see that I have a divider row here, uh, which is my second row, and I can click into it. I can edit this via YAML. But right now we do not have visual editors for each one of the different rows. But we do have the ability to take this row edit in the YAML by itself. And I can click back here at the top to get back to my card editor. Um, the next thing we can do, or the, ne the next row is a call service row, same thing. Um, section row, all these are the same. But there is another little bit added feature in here. Now that we have this new edit screen, the editor that we do have is for your normal entities. So for example, if you don't use one of these special rows, click edit, and it actually brings you up to an editor where you can change these basic um, features of an entity row. For example, the name, I can send the, the um, you know, my ground floor vacuum to basement vacuum, and that automatically updates in the, uh, in the UI, in the preview there. Uh, for example, I can change the icon and I can also update the secondary information. And these are not all the secondary informations that we have. These are actually limited to the, um, to the entity that you have. Um, so some secondary infos like last triggered for automations are only for automations and scripts. Uh, there's also tilt position and position that are available for cover. And there's also brightness that's available for light, which I'll show you in a second. But I can say last changed, and now this is the last time this entity changed. Uh, let's go to a light real quick. Kitchen lights, and we'll edit it. Go back up. You can now see brightness. And now we can see the brightness under the uh, entity row is the secondary information, which is really cool to do this in the UI. Um, this is all, this is like, this row is completely editable in the UI. And now nothing that you can put into this card should really break it unless it's completely custom and is not a part of the um, documentation of the entities card. Everything else you should be able to add to this card and still edit the main functions within the UI. For example, I have a footer down here um, that if you go to the code editor, you can see that I added a footer, but the, um, the UI editor doesn't break. It still allows me to edit everything else about this card. I just have to go to the code editor for the graph. And soon, hopefully next release, that will be changed as well, where you can edit the header and footer within the UI. And hopefully keep adding in uh, the ability to edit the divider, edit the call service row, and all these other extra rows. Um, so we're working on that. This is super cool. And I could save it, and it all shows up in the view itself. That's like one of the coolest features of 0.116 that we have in the front end. Um, this is something I've been wanting for a while, so I just you know I went ahead and did it. Um, I think it's going to be very useful, and hopefully everybody can start using the UI a little bit more. Uh, the next one, we have now the ability to set the initial view of the calendar card. Give this, edit it really quickly. And now I can set the initial view to be 
day, for example, I'll save that. And now this is always going to come up as day. If I refresh, it's going to come up as day again. Um, so before it was only going to come up to the um, to the month view, but now you can set it to come up to day and also come up to the list view, which is really cool. So now if you just want to see the agenda, you never have to see those other ones. You don't have to click to them. Um, so that's a really cool change. Hopefully everybody can use that. Um, and Because we, we had a lot of feature requests for that. Um, the next change uh, that I want to talk about are is the lockbook changes. So as you can see here, this is going to look a little bit differently. It's going to give you a little bit more information. And um, one of the most important things is, is most of the message here that you see is now translatable. Um, what that means is, for example, if you are in a, your, your language is set to Spanish, this is automatically going to translate to Spanish, unlike it did before. Um, and I can go ahead and click into the to see uh, what's up for that entity. And now the icon is actually going to show up and be the icon for the, um, for the state that it was at in the log for the logbook entry. So for example, if there was motion, I'm going to see the running icon. And if there was no motion set, then I would see the, you know, person standing icon. Um, so, you know, the icon is now, you know, this has changed to cloudy. This is a cloud. Uh, the sun was set, dark side was partly cloudy, still a cloud, but um, the icon now reflects what the entry state is. Um, and the uh, the other little feature that was added, it was this has changed. The UI has changed a little bit, but the other feature is that it, we added the relative time, so you don't, no longer have to do any kind of calculations to see how long ago um, this logbook entry happened. So, for example, I can say, "Oh, it was at 8:20. What time was that?" I don't have to look anymore, and uh, I just say, "Oh, that was about eight minutes ago." That's really cool. Um, the next big change, and this one is real big and can be and it's going to be real big once you know custom developers get their hands on it is we added the ability to set up custom view layouts so what that means is you're now able to custom developers are now able to create custom views meaning they can just as they create a custom card um, register it in the custom element register or custom registry custom element registry sorry and you can set the type currently only in yaml um, as we're not ready to release this into the ui yet you can set that in the yaml code for the type of the view so for example if i go to edit dashboard edit my view actually can't do it here i'm sorry i have to go to raw configuration editor here's my view if i were to change this to type panel, right, which is a view type that we have in core. This is just an example. Custom developers can set up one that's like custom, and then you can download the JS file. And then if it's my new view, they'll be able to set up a my new view type, and that can lay out the cards in any way that they want it to. So for example, this is a big one that I'm developing currently, drag and drop. So what that means is um, this gives me the or it gives us the ability, and this will be in core, to change the way that the view is laid out, that the cards are rendered, that the cards are edited, that the cards are, you know, the height of the cards, the width of the cards, anything about the how the view is laid out, how your cards are put on the screen can be changed via custom um, view element. So I think that this is going to be a really cool feature that custom card developers and custom developers out there will be able to really use and really customize their their views and stuff for for other people for themselves um, and you know bringing drag and drop to um, probably one point or zero point one one seven is going to be a super cool feature as well. It is going to be released in like a an alpha stage. So if you use it, you you know know that it's not going to work perfectly. Um, it's not going to, you know, be 100%, uh, but it will be there. 
Um, and it is going to be really cool. So the next thing uh, with that is I'm going to show really quickly. Show this blog post that I've been about this. Find it real quick. And, uh, but uh, this will be be really cool. Um, but basically, this is this may um, break some changes for some for some custom developers. But let me pull this up really quick just to show you kind of a visual of what I'm talking about. This has not gone live yet, but I am going to show it. Note that this can change. Uh, nothing I show here is 100%. Um, so this right here is what I'm talking about. Custom developers are able to do custom views. Um, we are going to supply the cards, the badges, um, and all you have to do is lay them out in the way that you want to. You also have the ability to customize how, they're, how the card edit um, is displayed. So for example, if we go into edit mode, it's up to you to determine how you show on your card that edit mode is available. And you can copy and paste uh, the edit options that we have currently if you need to, um, which is available in this masonry view file. The breaking change here though, is because we changed the way views work, this Huey view element is not going to um, have lit element available. So this is a little bit technical, but if it's not going to have lit, lit element available anymore. You will need to change that to Huey dash masonry dash view. All change. I know it is breaking, um, but it is going to help in the long run to getting these custom views out to being able to, you know, do a lot more cool stuff when it comes to to layout of cards. Um, so I think this is going to be worth it. Uh, I know that it's not you know, ideal to have breaking changes, but it is going to be worth it. Cool stuff. Um, but the way, you know, here's an example, a simple example of a new view uh, that can be created. This is just going to put the cards on the page and do nothing else, but that can be built upon, right? Um, and if you need an example, go ahead and look at our masonry view located in the cord front end uh, repo. So, that is the big changes for the front end uh, this release. I know we got a little bit technical there at the end, but I think that it is super cool for people to know, to people to get out there and ask these custom developers to, you know, for different feature requests for uh, different view types, different ways to, you know, do cards, be different ways to, to um, you can have that layout object on the card to then set that card up. You know, we can set the position, you can set the width, you can set anything in that layout um, property. So that's super cool. Um, but we went over the calendar initial view. We went over the card editor, the um, entity editor, entities card editor. No longer breaks your your UI editor. You're always able to use that, and you're able to edit um, special rows now, which is super cool. Still code YAML, but we're getting there. It is it is moving in the right direction. Logbook changes subtle, but super cool stuff coming, and that's going to continue updating to be more localized, more translated. Um, that's for, you know, the non-English folks out there. Everything is normally English, but um, if you're not, that's going to be really cool because now that's going to be in your native language. Um, and then custom views. So super cool stuff coming in this release. If you haven't seen the beta um, and you want to test it, go for it. Let us know what's wrong, you know, if there's any bugs so we can go out there and get a better release whenever we release it to the full um, 0.116 release. Thank you guys. Uh, second video in the now renamed was Lovelace. I changed it a little bit so that I could incorporate a little bit more the Home Assistant front end tips and tricks, um, you know, including tips, including tricks, including, um, you know, what's coming up, what's new. I'm going to try and get out, you know, sooner updates for these kind of features to say, you know, once that PR is merged, I know this feature is going in there um, and this is kind of what's coming up. You can get really excited about the new releases. Um, super cool stuff coming. Hope you guys get the beta, at least get the new uh, updated version when it comes out. For the full release super cool stuff and hope you guys have a great day night whatever time it is